Yeah. Um, I try to make uh, utilitarian baskets. I want people to take my baskets and not be afraid to throw stuff in them. <laughs> you know, I got, I've given away baskets that people will just put in their closets and they're using. It's not, you know, I want to make a nice rugged basket that looks nice. Yeah. You know, kind of like a compromise between a piece of artwork and something you don't mind lugging in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. How did you learn how to do this? Um, by accident. I, uh, I was a bow maker originally. And I cut the wrong tree down. <laughs> I cut a black ash tree down. That was the first tree I ever cut was the best tree I ever had. Pounded real nice, stripped real nice, and after that it's been a struggle. <laughs> That's why I started cutting them the way I did. Um, I, have, I was lucky enough to, um, there's a basket maker in my area who, who built them for 60 years. And as soon as I realized what I had, I called him up and he said, stop pounding, get a handful of stuff and come see me. So that's how you learn how to do it. That's how I get going. And I've been lucky enough to meet basket makers along the way that are willing to share their Oh, yeah. Which isn't always as easy yeah. as you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we have a little movie. Some ash pounding movie. You have a little demo. We have a little movie. We have cutting down the tree as a demo video as well. You can feel them. Is that is that a log crushing cut or is it? Yeah, we just cut it. About ten minutes ago. That's what we heard about. Saw fall, fall over there. <laughs> oh, you saw a tree fall. <laughs> Think that's odd. <laughs> yeah, that's that first one that I'll probably lose anyway. The top ring has got, even if you keep it, it's got this really brittle material on it that you'll wind off, you wind up scraping off anyway. So when you've done this whole ring around, then do you start pounding again? Again. And then it starts all over. And again, that's why I saw them. You'll notice that when I hit with this, this thing here, I'm only hitting right here. Unless I move the log around. But if I cut my one inch pieces, I'm hitting the whole surface of that one inch piece. And you can literally bang, 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 bang. You can walk right down the log. And it's, it's you can pound, you can, I could pound this in an hour, I'd have it all pounded out. It works that much better. The seed or another, does other logs work? Other trees? Uh, I have only used white ash and black ash. So. I've heard you can pound just about anything. It depends on the degree of difficulty. Brown ash pounds much better than white ash. Um, down south, they veneer all their logs, strip it, like your log and burger baskets and some of your baskets like you'll see at uh, Cabela's and the Trading Post. They're all a nice wide strip maple. Those are all veneered off a log and then cut into pieces. And, Anything to make this process easier? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be hard on your arm, huh? After a while. With a one-inch piece, you could flip it and switch hands. It's hard to wheel this around and start from the other side. I hope you have a hot tub. <laughs> Those are getting brittle. That might be the time of year. I cut most of mine in the spring with this. And this could be the size of the tree. I've never cut a tree this small. Um, so. So uh, how long, ideally, do you want it? Like two feet or something like that? I usually cut mine six feet. No, I mean like um, like a strip. Oh, is it really? A six foot strip? I usually make mine six feet with my tack baskets. Uh, oh, so you pound the whole thing and strip the bark. Right. And then you get the whole thing. In the springtime, when you cut them, this bark peels off. I could peel this whole sheet off in one piece. And typically, you want to cut them in the spring when most of the water is going up through them. This time of year, the leaves are falling, and most of the moisture, you could tell this log weighs nothing. So it might be part of the reason why it's not pounding really well. But you get the idea. In pounding, this is what you wind up with.
And you can tell that this is uh, Oh, wow. Next time we'll change She's ready to win. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to sit. <laughs> I'll win. Each one of those is a girlfriend. And that's on my one inch pieces. You can see how that looks really nice. That's because I sawed that one inch piece out of that log and I pounded it. So it came out looking like that. And for me, that's. And you can pass this around the, the, the feel of that growth ring. Is perfect for what I consider my risers. Some people call them standards, or my weavers. Um, I use really heavy weavers on my baskets. You can tell by this basket here. My weavers are almost as heavy as my risers. And my last handful of baskets I've done that way. Um, and you can tell the difference. Oh, like this one. Like in this basket. If you pass this around. You can push the sides in. Okay, this one here, you can't. Uh, you can pass that around and you can feel how sturdy. And that's because these risers are smaller? That's because my risers and weavers are about the same thickness.